But uh, when I got the call for the Academy Award, that was cool. Yeah, I, I was, how did that happen? Because I you was at my film. mother's house and I was painting her ceiling. Huh. And uh, this is in Michigan. In Michigan City. Yeah. Indiana. Yeah. But uh, when they call, I, I really thought for like the first two minutes. This is a joke. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody's pulling my leg. You know, I want to say this is that the the people that run the academy are really cool. Mm. It's. Like when I went out there for the the awards and for the yeah. they have a a luncheon beforehand, and um, yeah. I was really impressed how they treated yeah. people like like me that you know like yeah. it, we were nearly equal to the yeah. Warren Beatty's and Barbra Streisands. Really? Yeah, it was really really kind of surprising. I was I was. Um, uh, very gratified that that they were like that, but um, yeah, the guy called. And I told my mom, and she was like, she didn't know where to put it, and she went out like shopping that day. She didn't know like <laughs> mentally like how to yeah. handle that. Like, right? She, she she was probably thinking the same thing. Like, did did they really call you? What? Right. I'm gonna go shopping. <laughs> not, not even like. Yeah. She, and she came back that day, yeah. And and she goes, <laughs> you know. I was at Costco or something, <laughs> or whatever <laughs> the store was at the time in Michigan City. And, and, and when she got up to the cashier, she goes, "Hey, can I tell you something?" And the cashier <laughs> goes, "Yeah, sure." <laughs> she goes, "My son was just nominated for an Academy Award," and the cashier's like. What? <laughs> she goes, yeah, I, I feel the same way. I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. <laughs> and, and, it's, and that's the way it was for me, too. It's like I never thought of the, I never watched the Academy Awards. Uh, I, the Academy yeah. Awards weren't part of my, my life or anything. Mm. I, I didn't, yeah, it wasn't like mm, I was like excited about it. or. Yeah. Uh, so, so it was really kind of a... Um, a white elephant. You know, I didn't know what to do with it. Mm. But um, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. The luncheon was cool. They this, call you uh, out like maybe uh, a month before the actual Academy Awards, uh -huh. and there's a luncheon, and they say this we do this luncheon because then everybody's a winner, you know. Yeah. And uh, I sat at a table with Lawrence Kasdan and his wife. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. And um, I sat next to the woman that did the uh, art direction for a Warren Beatty film. Was there Bugsy. A, was that at that time? Yeah, it was Bugsy. Yeah, yeah. and she won. But yeah, I was sitting next did. to her, yeah. and she was like, um, you know, we're just kind of yeah. like um, going on about like, wow, can you believe this is happening? Yeah. While Lawrence Kasdan and his wife were like having some sort of argument, and they they looked like they were mad that they were sitting at our table. <laughs> I, really? don't, I don't. Yeah, I Warren don't know. Warren Beatty was being a diva. <laughs> I I don't know. I, he was at a different table. Oh, uh, okay. He wasn't there. But, but that yeah. that's the academy for you. Yeah. Is that they try to mix it up so like an art director and a short film doc guy yeah. are sitting with. A you know a celebrity director like Lawrence yeah. Kasdan. Yeah, you could be sitting with yeah. Lawrence Kasdan or Warren. And, and somebody or, was sitting. You know, so, you know, our Hungarian uh, animators are sitting with Warren Beatty. You know. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'd love to have seen that. But um. <laughs> Does uh, the, the yeah what what movie one animated? Uh, was that animated short that you're talking about? Because I have the list. I actually watched the entire show. Or like yeah, uh, as many know. segments I, I have no from the idea. show as they uploaded on YouTube. The only, last night? The only one I yeah. remember that was a movie that was there that was the same time was um, JFK. Yeah. And I remember that because. Um, oh, is this the Oliver Stone thing you told me about? Right. Yeah. Should I say it? Or? Yeah, go oh, ahead. Okay. Okay. I I met him at, at Eberfest. He seemed like a great guy. Oh, I'm sure he Which is. I, was, I mean, I was I, surprised. I like, this is but, but this go ahead. is not anything bad. Yeah. But uh, you know when. Not that I ever expected, I, as a matter of fact, in yeah. hindsight, it's probably better that I, I didn't win because I would have stood up there like, like Ralph Cramden, you know, I'm a hum a hum a hum. I wouldn't have yeah. known what to say. Yeah, I mean, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I wouldn't have known what to say. The I mean, girl it who been, won. It would have been great to yeah. win, but, you know, but, but even with that, 
Yeah. When you don't win, you, uh, you know, you're pissed off. You're like, fuck, you know? <laughs> and yeah. uh, and I, I, I was like, I'm sitting there, and I'm getting more and more teed off. And, uh, Did I, you sit throughout the whole rest of the show? Well, no, I had to get up and I walked out. And I you went, pulled an Eddie Murphy. If I anybody went, doesn't know, Eddie Murphy when he lost to Alan Aldo when he was nominated for Dreamgirls, which is why I think he didn't get nominated for Dolomite Is My Name. Like immediately when they called Alan Aldo and Alan Aldo got his award, Eddie Murphy left the show. He just stormed out. <laughs> And he made some excuse, like, I had to see my kids or something. But yeah, right, shit, right. You know? I, I can relate. You don't yeah. know what it's like, man. You feel like yeah. it's the ultimate rejection. You feel like, like a real kick in the ass. And so I go out in the hall, and I'm like, fuck, you know, I got it. Was this right after you lost, like, after a documentary short subject that you lost? Kind of, kind of. And uh, I'm out in the hallway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there, down the hallway, so this empty hallway, nobody else is out there. Mm. I hear this ranting profanity laced ranting can you give me some quotes uh, no oh, yeah. i can't i mean it's a long time ago yeah, it's okay. coming up on fucking 30 years yes right? yeah, uh we should say this was 1992 yeah the long, 64th long time ago. annual academy awards yeah and um he uh <laughs> i looked down the hall and i recognized him it's it's oliver stone yeah. and he had like one of these combat Cell phones, you know, they called it a <laughs> cell phone back then. It was yeah. like a foot long. Yeah, the you Wall know. Street phone. <laughs> yeah, and it's got this big antenna, you know. And, uh, and uh, he's on there, and he's like screaming into it because he didn't win. What did win? Um, oh, for Best Director? No, oh, no, Best, j- best Picture? Was, yeah. Oh, that was uh, Silence of the Lambs. Oh, Jonathan okay. Demme. Okay. One director and then one picture. Yeah. Yeah. But... It, he was so pissed off and he was ranting so bad, it completely cured me of my my rant. It was like when two year olds, like one yeah. two year old's having a tantrum, he sees another two year old having a worse tantrum. <laughs> he suddenly gets quiet and just like looks at him like chill dude. That's exactly <laughs> how it's like in my family's house when I go visit them. I'll get mad about something, but then my dad will get mad about something and then I pretend to act like the adult, although like I'd probably act the same way, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so he was, so he was like on the phone with probably his agents or who, something. Who, yeah. Who knows? I went back in and enjoyed the rest. Why of was the he show. freaking out? He already had two Oscars. Oh, I he think. did. I think so. He had one for Platoon and then one for Born on the Fourth of July. You know, there's a connection with Born on the Fourth of July and my nomination. Oh yes, yes, yes. Should we get into that, or should we talk about that? Sure. Bit? I mean, I, I mean, a little bit. I, I'd like yeah. to mention her. Yeah, let's, because, let's uh, um, talk about that. For, well, you know what? Like Go with your pace. Yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. Yeah. Like I was saying, like after that thing that's called the mix, Yeah. back in when you do 16-millimeter documentaries, film documentaries, yeah. the mix, the audio mix, yeah. is like the last thing you do. Yeah. And... Um, we had done the audio mix, the, me and the crew, the people, yeah. that, you know, the post-production crew, and we went out to Pops for Champagne. And I'm, you know, notoriously cheap, but you know, <laughs> I, 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 I knew from watching the, um, the film yeah. at the audio mix, I know that we had done, you know, whether it was recognized by anybody else, <laughs> I know that we had done something yeah. remarkable. Like, mm. that was a good film. I knew it from the mix. Mark and of the so, Maker, you mean? Yeah. yeah. And so when we went out to celebrate, it was before anybody would seen it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But we all knew that we had accomplished something. Yeah. And um, I didn't think of festivals. I didn't think of fame or, or even all... The reason I'm bringing up the story is, is that it's one of those things where it stops there in, in some way as a filmmaker. The creative process, mm-hmm. it stops at the mix mm-hmm. that you look and you go, we did it. Yeah. And whether it got any awards, we didn't even think about that. We were just this... this sigh this relief 
that we had accomplished something. Yeah. And uh, so I, I wasn't thinking about anything else at that point, festivals or whatever. Uh, and it was Loretta Smith, a really talented filmmaker, really talented. She was editing a film at our, our place uh, on our flatbeds. And um, she told me, she, she watched the um, rough cut. And she, yeah. she is, she's still working on it, but she made an incredible Ron Kovic documentary. I, mm -hmm. I, I saw it. I saw it back in the yeah. 80s. The first 20 minutes of it was just stellar. And Ron Kovic, for anyone who doesn't know, is... Born. Yeah, yeah, that's the main character that Tom Cruise played in Born on the Fourth of July. And she's a really good filmmaker. But uh, she just said to me, it was like October. It was like early October. She says, because she was plugged into this stuff back then. She goes, yeah. you have got to send that in to the, um, for the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. And I was like, come on, Loretta. That's ridiculous. Yeah. And she just kept pestering me. And it was like one week before mm -hmm. the deadline. And because uh, it was expensive. I mean... The entry fee was like 50 bucks. I mean, that wasn't so bad, but you had to give them a Imagine print. Imagine what it is now. You had to give mm -hmm. them a print. Yeah. And a pr print back then for a 30 minute film, that was like 350 bucks. Yeah. And you had to give them a print, 50 bucks. And uh, like one week before. And once I did it, I completely forgot about it. Yeah. Complete. I wasn't like checking and when, when they made the, I didn't even know when the announcement, that You just phone figured call, this is not going to happen, right? That yeah. phone call at my mother's house was completely out of the blue. That's why I thought wow. at first it was like a, a joke. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Incredible. So then, uh, do you, what, what was that like when you arrived at the Academy Awards? Like, what, what was that like? Am, is this? Am I in the twilight zone right now, or what? It was weird. Yeah. I'm just completely bizarre. Yeah. That luncheon was cool because everybody yeah. was cool. Yeah. I met some other filmmakers. You know, there was no um, sort of elitist attitude. No, yeah. nothing. I met Gregory Peck's grandson, who was huh. like a veteran, <laughs> and he was a filmmaker, and wow. uh, he was working on. Some, and I remember when he came up to me. We were at a party, and he goes, hey, I, I saw your film. Really good job. And I was looking at him like, God, this guy is, I mean, I was like, this guy's really handsome. I mean, I wasn't, yeah. I'm not gay, but I was like, I was, I well, noticed. you were in that moment. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that he was a really handsome yeah. guy. And, and something about him, like, like, looked familiar. Like, I felt like yeah. I should know him or something. <laughs> and uh, it was like. Halfway through the conversation, that I, I asked, Wait, "What's your name?" And I, he goes, "Oh, you know, Gregory Peck Jr." Or something. I was like, "No, you really?" He goes, "Yeah," but he was a great guy. Yeah. He's, he's a filmmaker, so it was yeah. cool. Um, but um, what you're asking, but but the actual Oscars. Mm. So I, I'm with my wife at the time, and um, we uh, they put us up in this luscious hotel mm. and uh, there uh, they are they're treating you like you're the grand marshal of the St. <laughs> Patrick's Day parade in Boston <laughs> that that's everybody you run into yeah. in Los Angeles whether it's a bus boy or a taxi driver or or some uh, or a famous person yeah they cannot believe and if you aren't in that if you're not in that context you know if you're yeah. a hoosier you know yeah. <laughs> you go out, or groupie or something yeah, and yeah. you go out there with this thing yeah. that they all covet so much yeah. and you've got it and you don't understand its value it's it's odd. It's like the Ark <laughs> of the Covenant that you're uh, yeah, it's walking just, around. It's the the completely detached yeah. contexts of each of your experiences. People in Los Angeles they revere the Oscar. Yeah. People out of Indiana, like 
Yeah, sure. It's like give, yeah. it's, <laughs> it's like yeah. giving a giraffe yeah. to a farmer. <laughs> you yeah. know, he's like, whoa, that's that's a big old. Egg. Mm. What do I do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where do you harness it? You you have no idea. You know. Yeah. So um, so that's that that detachment is is kind of weird while you're there, and then they insist the hotel is like literally two blocks from the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion. Yeah. But they insist that you get into a limo and they're going to drive you there. <laughs> All right. We got into the limo. It took nearly an hour <laughs> to get to Just because of all the people on the street, right? All the yeah. people all the, and all the other limos. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you open the door and you're getting out, there are paparazzi taking your picture and the, like they got this wild look in your eye <laughs> and you're move, and they're moving around you and stuff and I'm like what is this oh my god <laughs> I mean it's dangerous yeah I could see like if you did that too much yeah it's no wonder a lot of people are fucked up in Los Hollywood if yeah. you do that on a daily basis it'd be like no matter how good your self-esteem is, yeah. if you paid like 10 people, yeah. that every time they saw you, they'd go into a throw-up reaction. No matter yeah. what your esteem is, after a while, it would start to, <laughs> you'd start to have self-disgust, you know? It's the same with this. If every time you go out and get out of a car, they, they act like that, you are in serious jeopardy of very bad mental health conditions <laughs> mm. and then walking down the red carpet yeah that we we walked the red carpet and people yeah. were like people that had been up all night i mean they weren't there for me of course yeah but because i was walking on the red carpet they're like reaching out it's like it's like jesus is walking there yeah and i'm like a short documentary guy that's never coming back. Yeah. <laughs> they still, they, they want to touch your hem. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not making f fun of them. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm saying this is a weird. It's like being in another world, it sounds. It is. Yeah. It's, it's just a weird phenomenon that yeah. would do serious damage to your psyche if you were doing this on a more than once in a lifetime like basis. if you were jack nicholson you could see why you'd, he'd walk around with shades and yeah kind of act a little <laughs> yeah a little odd yeah right uh yeah. people that are able to handle it i i guess people that are, you know their if their parents were famous or something that yeah like they grew they, up with it and yeah. they're yeah but like people who didn't like the enormous culture shock in a way yeah, yeah. one thing was cool uh, not yeah. cool but it yeah. was a notable story was that um so we sit in our seats and i had a tuxedo i went out and bought a tuxedo yeah oh i yeah. thought they give you one you had to buy it oh no i had to buy it yeah, 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 yeah. i don't know if they give you one. I, I bought mine <laughs> but um i wore it maybe yeah. two more times yeah, but yeah. um you still have it? I do. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and the cufflinks and all that. Yeah. But um, I, uh, so we get our seats, and we're sitting in our seats, and uh, about, you know, a quarter of the way in uh, the show, I, j I got to take a piss, and I... Oh, no. Yeah, so I... How I do, where are the bathrooms there? I always wonder. Well, now it's at the it's Kodak a Theater. Yeah, it's a Dolby Theater. The Dolby Theater, I should say, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I... I can't say, but I, I had to get up, and I, you know, I'm fidgety, too. I'm nervous and all that. So I get up to go. Um, uh, we both get up, and we go yeah. out to, um, you know, power our nose or whatever. And uh, we, we come back, and we stop at the entranceway, and we, we see, God damn, somebody taking our seats. Who, who took our seats, you know? And we're like... You mean you went to go take a piss, and someone took your seat? Yeah. 
And we're like, we're kind of indignant. Okay, who was it? Yeah. And uh, I was like, what the fuck is this, you know? And, uh, and so <laughs> I get, I don't, I'm like, oh, all right, I'm not going to make a scene. I mean, there's yeah. cameras and stuff like that. I'm not going to go down there. Yeah, hey, get out of my seat, you know? Yeah. I, I was like, um, I go to an usher. Yeah. I do it the right way. I go to an usher. And uh, I say, hey, look, I'm not here to make trouble, but, you know, we got tickets. And I show them the tickets. And I said, we go, we left our seats as these two clowns come in. And the usher starts, he starts to laugh. He goes, can you come here with me? I want to show you something. Then I go, okay. And we, we follow him. And we go around the corner. There's this line of people, a line of people with tuxedos. Yeah. And he says, these are our seat sitters. Anytime anybody leaves their seat, we send people in right away to sit in the seat temporarily so it doesn't ever look like the theater. Oh, so for I, the broadcast, yeah. they want to yeah, make it look you like Yeah, but I didn't know. I yeah. was like, God damn, somebody took my seat. I mean, yeah. who would think that somebody for the low life would do that? Yeah. <laughs> who would be able to just fucking... Right. But it wasn't. It was like it's something that they do. Wow. That's probably why some people stay up all night so they can be a seat sitter. <laughs> yeah, it was all like, young come on, people. Come on, Beatty. Go yeah. out and take a piss. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's that? I always wondered how big it is when you're in there. Does it look bigger on camera? Oh, it's huge. Oh, it is as big as it, it looks. It is, yeah. There's a lot of people. It's intimidating. Is the stage as big as it looks on the camera? The only thing I remember from the yeah. show, I remember Jack Palance. One arm push ups. Push ups. Yeah. How close were you to the stage from where you were About sitting? About halfway. Really? Yeah. Wow. I could. Can, can, I. I don't know if I. I try to catch you on camera during the yeah. uh, documentary short subject. Yeah. I couldn't. I don't know if I could see you or not, unless you were at the end of the aisle and you were the guy who stood up when. Uh, I did. That was you. That was me. Okay. Well, there's the thumbnail for the episode. I had. Uh, <laughs> you were the guy at the end of the aisle, like when she was walking through, and you stood up for yeah. her. Probably wanted a tripper, but uh, <laughs> but uh, the movie that did win uh, documentary short sub the uh, short subject <laughs> the the nominees were uh, bird nesters of Thailand sounds like something you'd make uh, AKA shadow hunters <laughs> we're, in, we're we're that bird friends. nester guy I remember he was kind of a dick oh really yeah. fuck him then yeah. fuck Eric Valley and Frenchman yeah yeah is that him yeah or was it Elaine Mahani? No. There is Eric. Fuck him. All right. <laughs> Who else was it? Uh, a Little Vicious. Amy Humes. Oh, producer. yeah. Yeah, she was a nice woman. She was oh, out of New yeah. York, yeah. yeah. She was kind of plugged in with the New York uh, indie scene. She knew Kevin Bacon. Oh. I think, I think he did the uh, narration. Oh, really? Yeah. As a matter of fact, you could just you could just look at this if you'd like. And then we got Memorial Letters from American Soldiers. Uh, that was a controversy because yeah. um, he uh, did an hour long, and everybody thought he should have won an hour long the year before. Yeah, isn't, I thought that. And then he did a shorter version and then resubmitted it because oh. uh, a lot of people said, hey, you got a good chance, try it again. Yeah. It, it wasn't even close. Because they. Hey, uh, one thing. That one thing that was in my favor, yeah, going into it, out of the like five major newspapers uh, in Los Angeles at the time, uh, Los Angeles and maybe some other uh, yeah. like nearby um, industry people yeah. predicted that I would win. Really? Yeah, I got four. No out wonder of the why five. you got mad. Yeah, no, I would have an anyhow. Yeah. Uh, they predicted you, know, you her would win. Fi her fi yeah, they did. One thing about her film that was uh, controversial. Now, was she okay? Was Deborah? Uh, oh, she's Chazon? a nice woman, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, that's very nice good. Woman. Yeah, well, very that's nice good. woman. Yeah, yeah, but uh, nice. one of the controversies was her, and this is because things are changing, was yeah. that uh, she shot on video yeah. and then transferred to 16 millimeter. Oh, really? Yeah. So some yeah. people felt like, eh, hey, come on. Yeah. But, you know. If it's good, it's good, right? It's good, it's good, yeah. Yeah, yeah and the, her, the movie that won was, I'm going to belch. Excuse me. Uh, Deadly Deception, General Electric Nuclear Weapons. And she just died like maybe two years ago. What? Yeah, she was like my age. 
Oh, yeah. that's terrible. Uh, I think it was breast cancer. Yeah, it, was, it oh. really is sad. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's too bad. Cause she she had uh, she I could see in a way why she would win because it kind of felt fell into the realm of zeitgeist, maybe. Well, it's like Harlan County, you know. Yeah. It, uh, it's like um, people are dying. People are very passionate. Very, you know. Yeah, and it's about General Electric basically making nuclear weapons, and she made like this whole. Anti, cancer, yeah. Uh, general. The workers speak. were getting cancer. They weren't. Oh, that's what wow. the the uh, the point of it was. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I could see, and she said, like on stage, like down with a General Electric or mm-hmm. boycott General Electric or something like that. Um, but I don't know. What's that feeling like when your subject finally comes up when Spike Lee and John Singleton? Uh, is it Singletary or Singleton? I believe <laughs> Singleton, Singleton. Yes, uh, just passed away. I think last year. Oh, um, he did. Yeah. yeah, he directed Boys of the Hood, yeah. and he was like the youngest nominee to be directed for Best Director. Whoa! And, and one of the few black nominees yeah. to be nominated. You know, and that was in 1992. You know, think about that, and. Yeah, it was him and Spike Lee who came up and introduced you. What was that like before you were nominated and then when you got there? Because even before, I'm going to guess, like, you're, you're just like, on it's a, edge. It's like a dream. It's like yeah. a, you're in a dream. You you're just looking around like, because that's yeah. what I imagine. I just imagine it, I couldn't even look at the stage. I just time like, is oh. going so fast while your mind is just processing right everything. it's yeah. not keeping up so like yeah. to say can you re- can you remember when spike lee i can't yeah it was just a blur yeah it was like uh, j- j- there was this great bit from robin williams who's actually nominated for best director that uh, not i'm sorry best actor that year um i can't remember the name of the film but he he would but i remember there was uh um, scene uh, no, uh, it was it was something else. Um, I know I know somebody will correct me on it immediately, oh. but um, essentially what happened was uh, he he had this whole thing he was talking about inside the actor studio where he said, you know, they announce your name and everything goes in slow motion. And then you get up on the stage, and then immediately you're trying to say everything that's going on faster. And the whole time your brain's saying, What? <laughs> you asshole! You forgot to thank your mother! <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, I always thought that defined probably what people felt right there. You know, everything's like just. But your, is there, there was no more a slow motion moment, right? It was just all. Uh, I can't, I can't, re- on the VHS re- I tape. can't really remember it all. Yeah. But man, so so you don't remember what it felt like when Lee and Seagull, but yeah, I would just remember watching that. I'm like, God, I couldn't imagine, you know. And then you have to get up and stand up for the winner. And she walks right past you on camera, like, and you're just thinking like people are, uh, yeah, fuck, yeah. But I don't mean to bring up traumatic memories. <laughs> I don't want to bring. Well, no, you know, having the nomination. Yeah. So it is an honor being nominated then. It is. Yeah. And, uh, but don't tell somebody that after they've, you know, that evening. Don't say that to them that evening. Don't say what? It's, a, it's an is honor it? just to be nominated. Oh, really? <laughs> they'll, they'll probably strangle you. Yeah. Why? <laughs> you you got to give it some time. You, tell them a week later that, oh, it's, it's really an honor to be nominated. Oh, you mean uh, like to your friends or to no, the No, no, like event? somebody, to, to, for somebody to say to somebody that just was nominated yeah. and didn't get the Oscar that night. Oh, To say I to see. them, oh, it's, it's such an honor just to be nominated. Because they're probably <laughs> pissed off. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, don't yeah. do it. Um, yeah. But the, the good thing is, is that, because I, I can't say that the Oscar made any difference in, yeah. my, in my career. In your life or anything? It just it happens? I, no them. overt way. Yeah. Like somebody says, oh, that guy was nominated for an Oscar. Let's give him a job. You know, No. Really? Uh, no. Especially in Chicago, they, they just don't know what to do with it. You know, It's like, oh, cool. Yeah. In L.A., though, it must carry. It might. Because that's the way still, you describe it. you'd have it, to be you know? out there. You'd have to be in that environment first, you know. And so... 
in, in that sense, no, it's not, not a real thing. But on, on another level, though, yeah. as you go through life, yeah. um, that you have it, it, there's a certain comfort that you have going forward that, uh, that you are a good filmmaker. Yeah. People recognize your work. Yeah. 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 And that they, you can't take that away from yourself. You yeah. know, you, I, everybody is, you know, you, you denigrate your own self. Yeah, you, you yeah. fucked up or whatever. And, and it, that has been ameliorated or tempered in some way with me because yeah. some part of my brain says, dude, you, you were nominated for an Academy Award. <laughs> you yeah. know, so... In that sense, it's it's helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, did so I always did wonder after you walked out into the hallway and you saw Oliver Stone losing his shit, you know, right after you lost. Like, did you did you go back and watch the rest of the show? Yeah. Oh, okay. So so you knew how to get. How do you get the seat filler out of there though? Oh, like, as soon you, as you show up, they they leap. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh. Get the fuck out of my seat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't have to do anything. You just have to stand there, and they they know. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I had kept the ticket. I'm sure I had a ticket, but you know. I don't know if you ever do, uh, feel free. We'll put it on our Instagram page. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, but uh, so that's how you get in. Is that how you prove that? Well, they ask you your name, I'm guessing, like you're going to a nightclub in order to get in. You come out of a limo and walk around. Well, yeah, carpet. we, we yeah. yeah. There, there's Which I couldn't imagine the visual of that. Like, like you oh, see it Oh, that the woman window. from um, Terminator. Linda Hamilton? Yeah, she was there. And What's Linda Hamilton like? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't know Linda <laughs> Hamilton, but yeah. I remember the weirdness because she was in front of me and she stopped and she's wearing a you know, pretty slinky dress. She's got a hot body. And okay. She was, yeah, okay. yeah, she, yeah. was um, she was like flexing her muscles and, and making poses as they're taking pictures of her. And I just remember at that point like thinking, wow, this is really odd. I mean, yeah. I mean that's that's her job. She's got to do that. That's what's yeah. required. But I was like thinking to myself, like, that's peculiar. <laughs> She's still doing Terminator movies. Yeah. Like, well, she just did one recently, and they killed the franchise. But uh, yeah, can you imagine that? Since that, and the Terminator oh. Two won like five Oscars that day. Terminator Two. Yeah. It won for, like, sound editing, sound mixing, uh, which I don't know why they split that up because they always just give it to the same department. Just put it, just make it one Oscar for both departments, you know? And then it won for visual effects. It, uh, God damn it, what the hell else did it win for? But it won for, I think, a couple others as well. And I was like, wow. I didn't know Terminator 2 was such... And people would, like, lose their shit whenever they nom and, like, does, announce um, Terminator 2. Does Cuckoo's two. Nest still hold the... Um Record for the amount of Academy Awards. I don't know. I know Lord of the Rings won like fucking thirteen. I think Return of the I think King. Cuckoo's Nest did too. Really? Yeah. Holy shit! Yeah, that might be. It. I'm a Cuckoo's Nest. I always wanted to do a podcast about mental health, and I want to do it with this girl who does a podcast about it. And I uh, Cuckoo's Nest, I think, is one of the most beautiful movies yeah i i concur help. man yeah. and a great uh score yeah yeah really the, good the, 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 uh, the Chiefs. jack nietzsche uh, was the uh composer uh yeah just oh god i could go on forever about yeah that was a that. great I, I watch that movie i cry every time i saw it at yeah. the esquire on uh oak street yeah in 1974 yeah 75 yeah. yeah yeah amazing so, do you remember anything else from that night, or is it just kind of blurry, like, after the show? Like, do you remember them? Because I don't mean to press. It's just, you know, it's such an unusual experience that, yeah. No, it was pretty much, it was done. Yeah, <laughs> after your category, yeah. it's like. That was it. Well, now I got to sit here. <laughs> but it goes pretty fast. No, so. and then you, we, we uh, had dinner. Uh, yeah. They have a dinner, uh, like a just an incredible dinner. Yeah. And I remember uh, the thing I remember. <laughs> Nick Nolte was so goddamn drunk. Big surprise. And uh, <laughs> it was like maybe 
He never or, spoke in that whole show. He kept maybe cutting to him, five, but he never spoke. It, I'm it like, was I'm five if I, or six yeah. in the evening. Yeah. And he was already three sheets to the wind, man. He was. He was, was he just slurring? No, nah, he's like sitting, like slumped. I, I wasn't <laughs> at his table. Yeah. Uh, this is where it was different. Yeah. Was at the dinner, the celebrities are up on a raised area, you know. Oh, really? About three feet. And away from everyone else, like yeah. go away, peasants. Yeah. yeah. Well, not not quite like yeah. that. I mean, we're still there, but yeah. I sat at the table with um, the lady that did uh, Rocky, um, the squirrel's voice. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't remember. Rocky Bowinkle. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember her name. Uh, okay. Yeah. But she said to me that and she goes, "Wow, it's still an honor to be." And I was like, "Rocky, <laughs> knock it off." Yeah. I'll take away all your nuts. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So he, so Nolte was just so drunk. Yeah, and really good wine, man. Oh, I could good have wine. You a white steak. wine guy or a red wine guy? Red. Oh, I'm a I'm a white wine guy. I like. Yeah. I, I'm a pussy. I like I like I like it Thick nice and sweet. Steak. Yeah. I, you know, prime rib. Oh yeah. You get yours rare. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's how I like it. Nice and bloody. It was good. Mm, no. But I was still kind of pissed off. Oh, well, you should have just enjoyed the night and told everyone it's not going to be dominated. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> having, but uh, having said that, what was it like after the event? After, you know, everything wound down, come back home? You know, is it like There were two kinds of people. Yeah. Two kinds, generally. Yeah. There are the people that... I'd say, hey, I was nominated for Academy Award. Yeah. They're they're like, whoa. Yeah. That is incredible, Dave. You know, yeah. congratulations. Like in awe, and, and awe struck, and make That's you me. feel good. Yeah. <laughs> there was another class of people, nearly as big, yeah. and it was it was surprising. It was a really uh, a um, a lesson in uh, human character. <laughs> mm. There's a certain demographic. And I could never predict who, which camp they would be in. Yeah. But this other demographic was, I tell them, I was nominated for Academy Award. They could not accept it. They would say, well, is this like, like separate from the Academy Awards? Like you do, I'm like, no, I was at the Academy Awards. It's like the Academy Awards. Yeah. And they, they oh, you mean like, it's like a special thing. Like, no, it's like, and once they, they, I convinced them yeah. <clears throat> that it's just like the Academy Awards short documentary was there at yeah. the best picture. Um, I could see the look in their eyes <laughs> that instead of increasing my stature, <laughs> yeah. I, I reduced the stature of the Academy Awards. Really? Yeah, they just could not accept that a guy they, like they me. Just, they just thought, like, yeah, you're bullshitting. It's a, not it's just a, bullshitting, yeah. but once they, they, they said they, the Academy Award really did give me a nomination, gave it to Dave McGowan. They're like, like, wow, I guess anyone could be nominated for an Oscar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like, well, I'm not, the Academy Awards aren't that hot any, in their minds anymore yeah. because cause I got it. Yeah, yeah, the nomination. But yeah, I think, I think the market was a little less saturated than maybe with submissions no, no no it's always every year yeah yeah well i mean that's incredible though that you got in and it's it a wonderful is, film it, i do truly mean that